Let's join with all the generations of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar, reading today's scripture aloud. It's on page 424 of your pew Bible. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper, but, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The word of the Lord. I once served a church where every time we read the Psalms or sang them, there was a woman who would burst out crying. She said, I just feel all the generations singing this with us. They're here with us when we do this, all the saints. The opening word to Psalm 1 is translated as happy or blessed in other translations. This Hebrew word, ashri, is about living a good life alongside other people. It's more than happy. And it's not about happy as in comfort. It's about never giving up. It's about the importance of ritual and practice, worshiping God. Some of us got out of that practice during the pandemic. Now, if y'all are watching, you need to come back. One of the reasons you're anxious is you've lost your practice. Practice grounds us. It's only together that we work through our less than godly nature and learn the joy of deepening in God's grace. Together is how we will tear down the walls that divide, not one by one. And that brings happiness, blessedness, the good life. I'd like to talk some about home. They say home is where the heart is. That's not in the Bible. It's hard to let your heart be anywhere it doesn't feel safe. This past year, Faith in Action Bay Area's guiding statement has been home is sacred. We're working with the city and the state as we race to build more homes so that people can age in place, so that they can be replanted from their cars and tents and into a safe house. Think of your childhood home or your current home. It's so much more than an address. Perhaps there are other soulful places that allow you to breathe and grow. Where do you feel planted? Are you happy there? Are you blessed and safe? How deep do your roots go? Are you flourishing there? 24 years ago, I moved across the country from Georgia to California. Even though I left my old home quite willingly, I still experience a feeling of homesickness, but I've realized lately it's not for a place, it's for something intangible. The homesickness I feel isn't a warm, fuzzy, overnight camp feeling, but a yearning for a deep place inside where a still, small voice, shielded and unscathed, speaks. I yearn for unity and reconciliation with my past and deep down with God. Union with God is a meta theme in the scripture to return to the bliss of the garden before everything went sideways, to walk with God in the cool of the day. 
That feeling is equal parts sorrow, joy, and beauty. Before you tell me to see a therapist, hear me out. It's not an everyday obsession. Brene Brown describes it this way. It's a predictable and always reoccurring desperation to find sense, a sense of sacredness within me, not outside of me, my soul, my home, God in me. It is homesickness for a place that exists only inside me. The first psalm is about our longing for God. Poet Joy Harjo writes, I carry a yearning I cannot bear alone in the dark. What shall I do with all this heartache? The deepest rooted dream of a tree is to walk even just a little ways to the edge of the river of life and drink. I was a high school senior auditioning for college, for music school. My parents had provided me with everything. Most of all, they gave me their faith. But when it came time for college, they said, good luck paying for that, we'll see you in four years. Back when I was 13, before that, I heard a woman play the piano. Her name was Helen Ramser. And her playing moved me, moved a 13-year-old hillbilly boy, moved me deeply. I asked her if she would please take me as a student. I felt so grown up going to my lessons in her studio at a college. Her fee was sliding scale for all of her students, and for me it was sometimes for free. She believed in me. My mother drove me to those weekly lessons. She felt kind of out of place waiting in the student lounge, so she opted to wait in her car, listening to the radio, reading tabloid magazines, I can still see her Ford LTD parked under a giant magnolia tree in the late afternoon sun, her head resting on an open window, waiting for her son to finish his piano lesson. The selfless love of those women who raised me, prepared me like soil for something good to grow in. You have someone like that in your life. I know you do, somebody who believed in you. And I want you to don't let this day end without thanking God for them and call them if you can. I obsessed over every drop of ink on the page of the Chopin Nocturne we worked on for my college audition. And finally, the day came. I played my heart out. Of course, it was not perfect, but perfect isn't the point in music. The final chords faded away and I start to panic. Where am I? I don't know where I am. <laughs> How did I get here? What will I see when I look up from this piano? The flow of that moment had carried me out of whatever that was on the stage. It carried me to an inner place where there's a life-giving stream that waits all the time. In that moment, I had a purpose. I was prepared. I was invested. And it took all of me, body and spirit. Thank you all for like getting into it earlier. That was beautiful. <laughs> body and spirit. If studying Chopin can do that, think about what studying God can do. Verse 2 says that we must meditate on God's teachings day and night. The word here means to murmur to yourself about God. Study the words of Jesus until they become rote. Know, know your faith. There's an old music joke that goes, pardon me, could you tell me how to get to Carnegie Hall? And the answer is, practice, practice, practice. Exactly. The same goes for God. How do you make 
yourself get to that stream of spirit where life flows. Practice, practice, practice. The lines between this world and the next can actually blur. You can find your own personal thin space in here. Sometimes I can almost recall, and this sounds crazy, sometimes I can almost recall whatever, a, a time before, like before now in this, a time before when whatever makes me me wasn't here yet. Is that nuts? It's not depression and it's not exhaustion, but there is a discomfort in this world that can only be relieved in here. It's up to every individual. Now, and this is a psalm of the individual. That's a special category of psalms. It's important in this psalm also to realize that um, the opening phrase is really, happy is the one. Happy is the individual. They were trying to make it gender inclusive. It, 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 that's great, that's a virtue. But this psalm really is about the individual. And then when the psalm talks about the wicked and the ungodly, those who make fun of other people and scoff at everybody, that's always a group. The individual versus the group. The good individual must then be prepared to go against the crowd. Have you ever tried to go against the crowd? At a concert, leaving a concert or a sporting event, you left your phone and had to go back in? It's not easy, and the crowd doesn't like it much either. I once lost Lou in the peace parade down Market Street. Lou is blind, for those of you who do not know, so I had to walk against the crowd. Just, I, we were marching, and I just looked around, well, I wonder where he is. And I found him holding his cane over his head. But getting to him was a long process. And because we live in the best city anywhere, the people helped me locate him. I would say, have you seen a blind guy, perhaps? And they said, yeah, but he's a long way back there, and he's kind of, well, you better hurry. <laughs> Whoops. Walk against the crowd. Happiness depends on personal choices. That's what this psalm is about. Now, you are not responsible for anyone else's feelings or anyone else's actions, but you are responsible for how you choose to react. How shall we respond with faith to the brokenness in this world? Practice, practice, practice. How do we answer our feelings of quiet desperation? The same way. Practice, practice, practice. How do we stand tall like a tree by the energy that gives us life? Practice. Amen.